Hello everybody, my name is Burnage and this is my review for Ghostbusters on the Sega Master System. If you've seen the angry video game nerd talk about the NES version, you're probably expecting a pretty bad time since this game is about the same. But actually, this version seems to be way better. I'm not super sure because I haven't played the NES version yet, but some parts seem obviously superior. I like how the game opens with the entire theme song. I normally like to show the entire intro, but that would take the whole video, so I'll cut it. So what you do in Ghostbusters is capture ghosts, of course. You drive from haunted building to haunted building, sucking up all the ghosts you see, and you get paid for it. With money, you can buy different gadgets and cars. You can only choose your car at the start of the game, though, and once you pick one, you're stuck with it. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the gadgets and cars, and I'll tell you why later. All the cars seem pretty decent, it just depends on how much money you want to spend. The main thing to look at, though, is the amount of gadgets it can hold. You can't sell your items, so once you buy one, you're stuck with it, and that slot is permanently taken up. There are only a couple gadgets of note that I'm going to talk about. The bait, which is pretty much required, and the only thing required. It's used to stop the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from destroying buildings. Once you see the ghosts turn green and head towards a building, you can press button 2 to drop some bait and they will come to you. This will stop them from turning into the Marshmallow Man and you will earn $2,000. You can also use the bait 5 times before it's gone. What a deal. The main reason you need to stop him is because it will cost you 4000 if he destroys a building. And you need 10000 by the time your PK bar fills up 3 times or you lose the game. The next couple gadgets are just nice because they keep you from having to return to HQ as often. You have to return to HQ when your traps are full, when your ion beam needs charged, or before you lose three Ghostbusters. Lose three Ghostbusters and it's game over. The first quality of life gadget is the laser confinement system which will automatically empty your traps every time you catch ghosts, so you rarely have to return to HQ. The only other gadget that is nice is the Super Ion Beam, because then you can stay out catching ghosts pretty much indefinitely without returning to HQ. Although these last two gadgets make the ghost catching part of the game much more enjoyable, I didn't go into detail on the gadgets because they aren't really necessary. All the gadgets only help you during this section, so once you enter Zool, it's all worthless. I'll let you figure it out for yourself, but this part of the game where you catch ghosts and drive around is pretty much totally skippable once you understand how the game works. This is probably the most fun part of the game though, so I don't recommend trying to figure out how to skip it until you've gotten your fill. Once the PK bar at the top fills three times, the third time being the red bar, it's time to enter the Zool building. If you don't have $10,000, you get game over, but if you have enough money, you get to continue. You then have to sneak past the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. You have to get two out of your three Ghostbusters past him, or it's game over. Next is the Stair Climb which is tough, but it's not nearly as impossible as the NES version seems. In this version, not only can you defend yourself, but you only have to go to the 10th floor. And your guy starts out by running to the 2nd floor before you can even control, so that one is just free. Nothing like the 22 floors you have to go up in the NES version, which is probably done because that's the floor they go up to in the movie. I'll take less accurate, but way more fun any day. Getting the hang of this section is very tough, and you'll probably get game over several times, but the game has a weird sort of continue function where you can start the game over but have all the money you entered the Zool building with. By the time I won, I had bought the best car and all the best gadgets, and that was pretty fun, so I don't look at game over here as a punishment. The early game is very short, so it doesn't take long to get back after game over, and each time you should have even more money. When I finally won, I had almost 60,000 to spare, and that's after buying everything. Finally, once you reach the top, you fight the final boss, Gorza. Wait, what? Wasn't it Gozer in the movie? All I can think is that this was a copyright issue, but the start of the game opens with the entire theme song, so I don't know how that works, but whatever. Gorza can be a tough fight, but he's super cheesable. Again, I'll let you figure that out for yourself. Beat Gorza and you beat the game! 
So how was it? Well, it was way better than I expected, I'll tell you that much. I enjoyed it a lot, and I think fans of Ghostbusters would have a good time too. Please drop a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see when I release the NES version review, which I should get around to sometime this year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.